While I was at MPG, I ran across Paul Sherman's booth, Paul's Pins and Things. I will put all of his information in the video description. This is one of Paul's Colorwood pin blanks. He makes these, and I found the design absolutely fascinating. I couldn't wait to turn one. I just had to have it. I've already got it marked for my tubes, and we're going to use a Cigarillo kit today. This is a really neat kit. This is 10 karat gold. I've never turned one of these. It's just, it looks like a cigar pin, but it uses seven millimeter tubes instead of 10 millimeter. So let's see what this looks like. I found and marked the center of both of my blanks with a punch. The Cigarillo kit uses a seven millimeter tube. So I've got my seven millimeter bit chucked up and we're ready to drill down through both of these blanks. Off camera, I glued the tubes into my blanks using some epoxy. And once that epoxy dried, I went ahead and squared the blanks to the tubes on my disc sander. We're now ready to turn, but I wanna show you something. Right here, you'll notice a little dimple in my bushing. There's two in this one, three in this one, and four in this one. The Cigarillo, which is the kit I'm turning, as well as the cigar pin, use four different size bushings. So I went ahead and took a Dremel tool and I put a dimple in those bushings because I always get them mixed up. But this lets me know if you lay it out to where this is the uh, body of the pin, and this is the cap. So it always goes one, two, three, four in that order. And I can every time now get my blanks and my bushings in the proper order to turn the pin. Turning this pin went extremely smooth. There were no issues. I ended up using a spindle gouge the entire time. It just was really easy to control. And uh, because this is a, a spectraply type of material, it cut very clean and very easy. I'm gonna sand it up and uh, we'll take a look at what it looks like right before we put a finish on it. The blank's been sanded. There was a lot of transfer of the dust into the different materials and maybe a little bit of resin that was left on uh, my sanding disc from a previous project. But you can see it's cleaning right off. Start the lathe up, give it a little spin. What I should have done is I should have put the non-stick bushings on here before I cleaned it. Uh, so what I'll have to do is I'll put the non-sticks on and then I'll have to uh, wipe it down one more time since I'll be touching it with my fingers to move it between bushings. But uh, it looks really nice. We can go ahead and dust it off since we're going to clean it again. Uh, yeah, I'm real happy with that. This is going to turn out really pretty. Uh, let me get it on the non-sticks and then we'll uh, apply a CA finish to our blanks. With the non-stick bushings on, let's go ahead and clean our blank a second time. That way, if there was any oil in my fingers or any residue of any kind, it will uh, be cleaned off with the denatured alcohol. All right, she's pretty darn clean. Uh, I am going to try something here. There's a couple of uh, little spots you can see where the paper towel uh, kind of uh, got onto the blank. Let me try something. Since I don't want to touch that with my fingers, I grab just an acetate brush and I can actually brush that uh, paper towel dust off of the blank without worrying about transferring any residue to the blank from my fingers, any oils or anything like that. Make sure it's all off of there. Looks good. Um, first time I've done that, but it seemed to make sense. I need to get that off there, otherwise it's embedded in the finish. Uh, I'm ready now to go ahead and begin applying my CA finish to the blank. Coat of thin going on. You can tell that's going to look really nice. All right, we're going to shut the camera off. I'm going to put uh, four more coats of thin, let it really sort of soak in and seal the blank. Then we'll follow that up with uh, five coats of medium, and I'll show you what the blank looks like before I start the micro mesh process. All of my coats of CA have been applied. 
blank is looking really nice. I'm not noticing any issues with, uh, you know, globs of CA where I might have got too much on one of the ends. It looks like it's relatively smooth from end to end. I'm really happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and micro mesh it, and we'll come back in a couple of minutes and take a look at what the blank looks like right before we apply the wax and buff it. I just finished with the micro mesh. I'm very happy with how these blanks look. They're just amazing. Um, I have a new process now with MicroMesh where I use each pad for 15 seconds on the blank. Uh, and then I wipe the blank off and move on to the next pad. It's been serving me really well and I'm getting a really nice finish. Uh, so I think I'm going to keep that process up. Let me get a little wax on these. Actually, what I'm going to do is get them off the non-sticks. We're going to square the ends of them up. Then I'm going to get a little wax on them and we're going to buff them. I've got the blanks on my buffing mandrel. The turning bushings are back against the blanks. And I'm just going to put some of this Renaissance wax on each blank. We'll get it rubbed in really good or work it in really good. And then we'll hit the buffing wheels. I took a quick peek at the instructions and this pen assembles just like a slimline. We're going to take our nib, put it into one end of the body blank. This is a uh, turn between center uh, slimline bushing. I'm going to use that on the other end to protect the back of the blank and then we'll slowly press it. And I like to rotate the blank to make sure it goes evenly into the component. That turned out nice. We have got an incredible fit right there with the component where the component meets the uh, blank. Now I'm going to take my transmission and just like we do with a slimline, we're only going to partially insert it maybe up to the brass then we're going to test fit the, the ink refill, and if all goes well, or if it all doesn't go well, we can press it a little farther. I just don't want to press it too far in because uh, removing it, uh, it can be done, but it's a bit of a chore, and I don't like to do it if I don't have to. I find that it's better to take your time and just sort of dial it in. This is a Dayacom kit. Daycom, Dayacom, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it comes with a really nice refill. Okay, looking in there, oh yeah, you can see I've got the uh, ink all the way ejected and it's maybe almost a three eighths of an inch back in there. We're gonna give it another little push. This time, we're gonna take it up to the first little bar there. And stop. Always take your time with these. You can see the refill, it's probably still an eighth of an inch inside of the uh, nib of the pen, so we're going to press it a little farther in. Okay. Let's give it a test fit. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. I haven't pulled the little protective ball off the end of the refill, and I'm not going to... Uh, until it's ready to be used, but that is perfect. I could not ask for a better fit. Let's go ahead and work on the cap of the pen now. All right, we are going to put the uh, cap through the clip. I'm going to put that on the back of the pen. Once again, I'm going to use my bushing to protect the pen, or to protect the blank. Let me flip it around like this. And I saw a little spot on here where there's a little white line. And what that is, that's where some of the white was on top of this green. And it didn't all sand away. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover that up. Let me put one of my blocks up there. Just get it started. And now let's finish it right off. There we go. Pull the bushing out. I've got a real nice transition there. I'm very happy with that. Here's our trim ring. It's going to drop onto the transmission like this. And let's see, is there a... I think it makes sense. To, well, we'll close the pin first. See that little red there? I do believe that came up. It should align with the red there because if you look at the other side, it's not quite as deep. Oh, wow. This is a nice pin. The transmission actuates very smoothly. Ooh, almost dropped it. Don't want to do that. I couldn't be happier with how this one turned out. The finish is darn near flawless. 
I really like this pin. I've never turned one of these Cigarillo kits before. I mean, I couldn't be happier with this pin. I love the kit. I've turned a lot of slim lines, and essentially this is just a, a fancy slim line, but the Deacom kits are so nice. I would turn a bunch more of these. Hopefully I have a few more in the kits that I bought. I got a great fit and finish at the components. The pin just moves so nicely. I'm very happy with this one. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me in the shop today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.